Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this modern steel and wood chair. Check it out. So to start off the build for the chair, what I'm going to do is lay out the dimensions on this piece of flat stock. That way I can reference it for all of the cuts I need to make. Much easier when working with metal to have a nice scale drawing um, and get started that way because you can make uh, all of the angle cuts by hand and not have to do them on something like if you were woodworking with a table saw or with a miter saw. So let's get to it. So here I'm laying out the shape that I want for the chair sides. Because of the thickness of the ruler I'm using, it's two inches, I can just trace around it with a silver Sharpie. I quickly cut the first 45 degree angle with the handheld angle grinder, and then I quickly move over to the chop saw for more speed and efficiency. I lay out all my lines and then just match the saw to it. So I enlisted the help of Brad to help me find the angle I'm looking for on the back. He's using a carpenter square, and on the pivot point, He's lining it up to tell us where we need the angle to be, which is 55 for a 110 degree angle. Set the saw to 35, and then that will give us the angle we're looking for. Because 35 is the difference in 90 and 55. Everything pre-cut, I'm gonna lay the chair out, tack it together, and then get the end parts welded up, and then the center stretchers, and then we're gonna start working on the wood. Anytime you're welding, you want to make sure you bevel the edge that way. When you're putting the weld bead in there, it can penetrate the weld nicely and give you a nice strong bond. Here I'm welding with flux core. I'm using the 140 weld pack Lincoln Electric welder from Home Depot. I then get everything tacked together and I go ahead and finish all the weld seams up, making them look as pretty as I can. Flux core is typically not a good looking weld, so I'm trying to leave these all exposed. That way I can grind them down nice and smooth after. And like I said here, I'm grinding down all of those welds using a flap disc on the angle grinder. So now that the chair is all ground down, as you saw, I was cutting up the slats for the seat. I'm gonna rip them down on the table saw, get the width that I want, round them over, and then we're gonna sink them in. As I'm building this project out at the Maker Ranch in Joshua Tree, Ben Ueda had some leftover tropical hardwoods that he had from some personal projects. So I decided to use those for the seat pan and the back slats. And here I'm countersinking for where all of the screw mounts will go in the slats. I then grab a cordless router and I round over all of the edges with a quarter inch chamfer bit. I wipe the base down with acetone and then I hit it with some self etching primer before a final coat of white enamel. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that button as well as the bell down below so you can see all the projects I've got coming in the future. After I get the enamel on the metal base, I go ahead and wipe down all the wood slats with some acetone in order to remove any other necessary dust as well as the oil from the wood itself. I then finish it with some teak oil, which is a good water resistant outdoor finish. In order to set the seat slats, I use a ruler as a spacer, which is roughly an eighth of an inch, and then I use self-tapping metal screws in the countersunk holes I drilled on the drill press in order to fasten them to the seat. You could also pre-drill these holes, but I just like to muscle through them with an impact driver, as you see here. Thank you guys for checking out this video. If you wanna see more from me, I've got another one queued up right here for you. I wanna send a big thank you out to Lincoln Electric for sponsoring this build. If you want more information about this build, make sure you're hitting that link in the description. Lastly, thank you one more time for tuning in. Go punch your next project in the face and I'll see you on the next video.